figure we would just make these ones. We actually don't know. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You guys are tuning in. We're going to be live here in just a second. We're getting our Instagrammers up and uh, active. We're going to be talking about treats. Get your pets ready. If you need your core activity for today, this is going to be it. How are we doing? You still need help? Let me see it. We're getting Instagram up and running, folks. So give me one second. Yeah, you hold that. Let's switch for a minute. Okay, we're still mic'd up, but we sometimes, it takes us a second to get rocking and rolling here. I find it so easy last time. Okay. Well, are you you're in it, right? Yeah, I'm in it. Great. Blow my nose. Well, <laughs> maybe try hitting the plus button. Those are the stories. All right. Well, you play with this for a minute. We're gonna hand this off. All right. <laughs> There you go, you guys. Nothing but the best here at Utah's Hogle Zoo. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Erica from the marketing department. I am masked. This is a nice mask my sister made. We're trying to get Instagram up and running, so if you uh, have friends watching on Instagram, just give us a minute because Daniel's over here working on that. What is this? This doesn't look like a zoo back here, but it does. We are behind the scenes of Rocky Shores, and we're going to be talking about treats we're going to hand some treats over to our sea lions and seals and even better we're going to teach you how you can make some great treats for your pets at home we're all stuck at home we're all looking for things to do this is going to be a great way to do it and we have some expert chefs in the kitchen um, so by the way i want to thank everybody who has supported the zoo you can go to hogelzoo.org and donate we also have a donate button right here on our facebook page if you've been enjoying our field trips that's a great way to just say thank you. Remember the zoo is closed right now, so any support you can give is so awesome. You could buy tickets now to use later. You can buy, renew, upgrade your membership to be used later as well. So please think about your zoo during this time. You can go to hogelzoo.org. Okay, let's get right to it. Let's introduce you to who is in the mix here. Here's Daniel, he's manning Instagram. How do we do over there? Hi, we got it running. Thumbs up, all right. And we have Joanne, you guys. Joanne's one of our resident Rocky Shore celebrities, and so is Ms. Michelle. Now, I usually bring uh, photos so that we can see what you guys look like behind your masks, but I think you guys have been on Facebook enough. I forgot the photo, and you guys, these are two celebrities. But should I introduce you guys as Chef Joanne and Chef Michelle? Today, yes. Tell us what's going on. Look at this, you guys. So today, we've prepped kind of a spread. What we're going to show you guys is something that we do here at the zoo a lot. We call it ice treats or ice blocks. Um, but this is also something that you can do at home with your pets. So okay. we brought a lot of different supplies here. We can kind of This is a tub through. we have at home. Cottage cheese. Yeah. Okay. So here at the zoo, you might have noticed we have a lot of stainless steel pans and buckets, but we brought some stuff that you might have at home. So cottage cheese container. Maybe you guys have some mold. Yes. Home. Anything you guys have that can go in the freezer? Is that a dinosaur? It's a dinosaur. Oh, there's a dinosaur. So, when we're going to start making um, an ice treat, we're going to put in, so for the bears, we might use something like this. We might use produce. So this is carrots and apples that we that Joanne chopped up earlier. Um, polar bears also really enjoy fat in their ice treats, but we can do a variety of other things. For the seals and sea lions, they're not really going to do produce. These guys only eat fish and shellfish. Is that what's in there? Kind of seafood in the wild. So in Ooh. here, we have fish. Right, what bears, kind of fish is this? So this one is a really tiny herring. 
And these ones are cape one. Cape one and herring. So you're making fish sickles. So we're gonna make some fish sickles for seals and sea lions, and we're gonna make some other treats that would be used for other animals, which would be more like what you might make at home if you're gonna make something for your dog, if you want to encourage your dog to eat for longer or just give them something to do, like maybe you need them to go play for an hour. This is one way to really extend out their feeding time while they're having a good time. I would suggest doing, giving these toys outside though. Give the toys, you guys, Not there it is. Toys. There's your outside expert. Toys only. But also, parents, you can do something similar for your kids. Maybe not with food treats, but little toys, and they gotta wait for that ice to melt. Uh huh. Again, outside toy only. So okay. while we're all stuck looking for things to do in quarantine, mm -hmm. and maybe your pet's tired of you being home, this is a great way for you to keep the kids and the pets busy. So they're gonna start making yep. this for the seals and sea lions. So for this one, we might do couple of cake one in here and then we're gonna add water so with these guys we have several seals and sea lions uh -huh. so we don't want to put all the food in one so this oh, sure. food would be for several that way each of the animals can get one also so if you have more than one dog you should definitely make more than one treat and again these are outside treats naturally but the weather's so gorgeous out there today now do the polar bears get fish sickles as well they or sure do. They you... sure do. so once we get that now this is fine we could just freeze this as okay. is it's gonna take a day or so, and then this would be good to go. The animals will play with this, they'll carry it around, they'll smash it against the wall, they'll wait for it to melt, and they'll try to get those fish out, they'll try to dig them out. Um, if we're feeling like we want it to be a little more festive, we can also color it. This is just food coloring. So oh, a, a color. are we making a festive fish sickle? Yeah, we're gonna make a green fish sickle. Green oh, fish green sickle. Green fish sickle. So tomorrow. Now, do you notice, do the pinnipeds have a favorite color or are they drawn more to one color than the other or just what mood you guys are in? So usually when we make these things, we just do what we feel like. Sure. But, um, <laughs> seals and sea lions in the wild are designed to see really well in the blue and green range. Oh, okay. They don't really see the other colors as well. The deeper you go in the water, the less sense. likely you're going to see those colors anyways. Okay. So, and it seems that us in Rocky Shores, we also really enjoy the blue and green spectrum. So we probably do a lot more of that. <laughs> um, but also tomorrow is Earth Day. Earth and Day. We are celebrating Party for the Planet. It's the 50th Earth Day. Can you believe that? No. It's Hard crazy. to believe. So we're going to do a little bit. You'll notice later when we show you some other things. Um, we've, got, we've done kind of an Earth Day theme. So, um, so the seals and sea lions, they eat fish. They The uh, fish live in the ocean, which is very salty. They're really good at tasting salt. They're not really big on sweet. Okay. They're not necessarily going to be able to taste a lot of the subtle flavors of fruit, but things like dogs or bears have a much better ability to taste the full spectrum. So for those animals, we might do something like jello or Kool-Aid. Now, is this just, you, I noticed it's sugar-free. Is this a, just a special treat part of their diet when you add the Kool-Aid or? It's basically just a special treat. Um, it doesn't really add any calories. Oh, okay. Um, we use the sugar-free kind. Even if we don't use sugar-free kind, it's such a small amount, especially because we're using it basically just for the color and the flavor. Sure. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of, gelatin mix into here. So if you guys are just tuning in, we are making some popsicle treats for our seals and sea lions and bears. And what's really great is this is a, something you guys could do for your pets at home or even your kids at home, outside so treats only. For, um, for like a dog at home, it might be fun, like just the Kong, majority of us have a yes. dog, have a Kong. So I'm just gonna shove some of this produce inside here. So not only is it a fun toy for them to get the Kong out, but then once the Kong comes out, then potentially they can get those other snacks. Uh, so oh, like so you're going to freeze the whole thing. Uh -huh. Okay. So then after, like, this is more appropriate size for your home freezer. Um, you're still, uh, when we go to outside to put these outside, we have five gallon buckets. So oh, we have okay. several walk-in <laughs> freezers at the zoo. So we can freeze large amounts of items in large containers for our bears and the pinnipeds okay. and everybody. So, so, so this would be a good treat for dogs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And frozen right there in the Kool-Aid and might take a day or two to freeze yes. and then yep. you've got a great summertime so treat. Let's, let's say okay. you don't have a day or two. Let's say you, you wake up in the morning and you want to do this and you want it for the afternoon. We brought some ice. So a way ah. to really speed this up is if you just put a bunch of ice in the treat, then you stick it in the freezer. This is going to freeze a lot faster. 
so I could potentially use this later in the same day. Okay. So ice is also something also. Um, so here at the zoo, we get creative because we are making very big ice treats. Uh -huh. So what you're going to see later is we're going to show you some layered ones. So we would, in a bigger bucket, we could do this, freeze okay. it, and then do another layer. So we might do like one layer is fish, one layer uh -huh. is just Kool-Aid, one layer is fruit, something like that. And if we want to do that faster, we might do something like this. We might put the ice in it so we can speed the speed process. Speed up the process. I think it's important to note, not only is this a treat, but it also serves as enrichment for the animals once yes. they get it, right? Because exactly. you're, you're asking them to, to dig and to sniff and to bite into it and to be patient and that kind of thing. Yes. Now, uh, Presley, six-year-old Presley wants to know how often the animals get fish sickles. So in the summer, we do it a lot more than we do in the winter because it's hot. So it's sure. also a fun way to cool the animals off. Works for your dog too, you can cool your dog off on a really hot day. Um, we do it maybe in the winter, we might only do it once a month. But in, it really depends on the area. Here in Rocky Shores, we have a lot of water and we do a lot more ice treats than some of the other areas, like maybe the small animals. They don't maybe get these as often. In the summer, we might do this up to once a week. Sometimes they'll do versions of this for the tigers called blood sickles, because tigers are, of course, notorious meat eaters as well. Yes, so you can, they can do that as well. Um, here, we just brought out an example. We're not going to use all of these, but if you were interested in putting toys in it. These are obviously bigger than These are big, big toys. So if you had a big old dog. Yeah, this would be maybe for a huge dog and you have a lot of freezer space or yeah. um, maybe you have a much smaller version of this. Uh -huh. But we've got hard plastic toys, Kongs. We put one of the Kongs in there. This is another Kong toy. We've got Frisbees. This is a, a Jolly Frisbee, so it's, it's rubbery. Jolly Frisbee. Um, okay. A lot of people oh, have these with dogs. Yeah. These are holy mollies. Yeah. Um, and then this is felt and maybe people don't necessarily use felt with their pets at home, but maybe you use like a tug rope. So tug that's, rope, sure. So that's something also that you can freeze in any of these. So you guys, these are fish sickles for the seals and sea lions. Don't go anywhere because we are going to go give them these treats so you can see how they enjoy it. It's so a beautiful day out there. Look the at this are. wagon of treats and toys. Oh my goodness, so what are we looking at? So this is what we've done over the last couple of days. So these are like oversized Kong, frozen Kong. Yes. yes. <laughs> on a much bigger scale, we have the buckets. These are like three gallon buckets. So we have toys frozen in them. Again, this is felt attached to a giant tennis so do, ball. So they'll probably go down and tug on that. And, yes. Okay. And maybe they'll grab it. Maybe they'll throw it. Um, oh my really goodness. Okay. So, and also for your dog. This one has one of those hard plastic. Um, so you can see that's it. pretty well frozen, guys. And then this one is a Kong. Just to make sure that you do not have to, you guys see that you don't have to put toys in it. This one is just fish. This has a couple of layers of okay. fish in it. And then, so these ones are very big. These are huge. How long does it take them to manipulate these? Um, this, they'll be going on this for um, an hour or two. Oh, okay. Quite a while. These little ones, these will be like 20, 30 minutes, maybe. Um, sometimes they just let them melt and wait for the fish. <laughs> They've outsmarted you. <laughs> so our freezer that we have, um, in Rocky Shores, we keep it at about a negative five. Oh, which goodness. Which is much colder than you keep your home freezer. So we actually made these, we put a couple of layers in them over one day. Um, again, we're trying to expedite it a bit by putting the ice in it, but our freezer is much colder than your home freezer. Wow. So, and um, But this is still something that you can do at home. Should we go give them the treats? Yeah. Let's All right. I'm going to, you guys said I need to put on a life jacket, okay. so let's... Let's get all geared up. Now, Carrie, you had a great question about the term enrichment. You do hear us say that a lot up here. Sorry, I'm just getting into my life jacket. Did I just hit you, Joanne? You're fine. Daniel's already in his. Enrichment, um, that's what we call ways that we engage the animals. So we do it for a lot of different reasons. We want to keep them really stimulated. So each day we do different things. It might be something different to smell. It might be something different to taste. They might get something different to look at. So that's what it means, enrichment. Sometimes we say it's similar to, you know, like, like giving your Kong. When you give a Kong to your dog, that's enrichment for your dog. So that's kind of why this is part treat, part enrichment. Okay, you guys, we are, we are in our life jacket. You see your life jacket? Daniel's got his. We've got, we've got our boots. The keepers don't have to wear life jackets because they pass a swimming test. We always do kind of safety first up here, so in case they fell in, 
You guys head out with Michelle. Okay, let's go with you guys. We're going, look, we're going right out here with the seals and sea lions. Oh my goodness. Okay, I will stand wherever you tell me because these boys are big. These are our biggest carnivores up at the zoo. We've got Diego on the left, right, Michelle? Yes. So Diego's over here, and then Maverick's over here with Joanna. We're giving them the ice treats we just made. No, we don't swim with the animals, um, but I tell you what we do when we dive in here to clean the pool, our divers do clean the pool with the animals in there. The seals and sea lions certainly never with our polar bears. That's a great question, Nicole. When Michelle comes back over, we will ask her. She's kind of getting the treats ready. We don't want a mutiny on our hands. If one animal gets a treat and the other doesn't, we could, we could have a problem. Let's see how they like our ice treats. You guys remember, this is something you can do for your pets at home. Now this one's got one of those balls kind of frozen right in it. Mark Miller, hello. It's so good to see your name. I hope you guys are keeping safe down there in California. Mark used to work here in guest services. So I like when we see our friends, uh, our friends join us. This looks like Maverick out here, taking a sniff. Diego's in there playing with that frozen pop treat. Thank you, you guys, for donating. Please continue to think about the zoo right now while we're closed. We have a donation button here. You can also go to hogelzoo.org. Difference between seals and sea lions. Here's a sea lion. This little guy right here is a seal, much smaller. You can see he's got kind of a speckled face. The seals also sort of flop around on their bellies when they're out on land, where sea lions will prop themselves up on their front flippers. So that's a great question, Georgia, and we get that question a lot. Do they know? They Yes. Now, Brianna, we don't call them tricks here because we don't ask them to do that um, for fun, even though it's really fun to watch. We do it. We ask them to do certain behaviors so that it helps us give them really great health care. So if they can open their mouth and we can look in at their teeth or if they can give us a flipper to take a look at, we can offer the best health care so we can make sure their bodies are healthy. Raylene, she freezes unsweetened applesauce pops for the dogs in the summer. See, that's a good idea too. What is their favorite flavor of Kool-Aid? That is a good question now. As soon as, oh, our keepers are back. Do they have a favorite flavor of Kool-Aid? The seals and sea lions don't really have a favorite flavor. Some of the bears, I think, just like stronger flavor. So okay. the more concentrated we get it. They just want to taste something. Now, the seal, oh, here's come some seals. I was gonna say, it seemed like the sea lions seemed more interested than the seals. They're bigger, so they get to see it first. Okay, yeah. and the seals just kind of know that? Uh-huh. Yes. Here he comes. So see, the sea lions prop up on their flippers like that, and then seals just stay flat on their bellies. How many, do seals and sea lions spend time together in the wild or only in the zoo? Yes, in the wild, both. Um, so these are harbor seals and California sea lions. And these guys are both uh, found all along the west coast of the US. So if you go to Washington, Oregon, California, you can find areas where there are California sea lions and harbor seals sitting pretty close to each other. It's so fun. That spot just off San Francisco where all the sea lions lay there barking. All right, everybody, you know, it's the favorite question of every Facebook field trip is what sound do the sea lions make? So sea lions make a barking noise. Um, that's the one that most people are familiar with. It's very, very uh, distinctive. Seals, though, don't really vocalize a lot. They kind of grunt they'll growl at each other, but they're much, much more quiet. So if you hear barking, that is definitely a sea lion and not a seal. Are you going to demonstrate for <laughs> <laughs> You guys, thumbs up for Michelle. Should she demonstrate? <laughs> Joanne doesn't. We, we tried to put Joanne on the spot a couple times and she, she won't do it. Michelle will do it. <laughs> nope, she won't. <laughs> But you guys, what's really awesome when you come to the seal sea lion demonstration, that's one of the behaviors is you guys, yes. you guys give them like a what? And so then you, they can. So you will hear, so their, their vocalizations they do for us are a little bit different than what they do on their own. When we ask them to vocalize, Diego has much more of the art, art, art bark that people are used to hearing. I did it. Mm -hmm. Mavericks is much more of like just a booming like rah. There we go. There um, we go. Look at all your thumbs up right there. <laughs> Everybody liked that. But when uh, when they're on their own, if you guys listen long enough, you can actually tell them apart by their voices. 
Diego's, oh, like a mom and her kids, huh? Diego's voice normally is, is very deep and manly. He's got like a booming, very bass voice. Maverick has a very high-pitched voice comparatively. Uh -huh. So when you hear that Maverick's bark is so much higher pitched than Diego's is. So if they're wrestling out here and playing, we can tell pretty much from anywhere who's who just by listening to them bark. That's amazing to me. Dee Dee's totally putting me on the spot. She said, maybe Erica can do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's calling me out. All right, let's see. We've had a couple other good questions um, come in. So Nika's actually gotten hers down to the fish layer. Oh, right, this right, right in yeah, front, the green? Nika right here. Oh, so she's already eaten her fish, you guys. Look at that, she was fast. No, whoever answered, we do not have the seals and sea lions in with the polar bears. Polar bears are next door. Polar bears are on the other side of that glass. And Nora specifically loves to come over and watch her seal and sea lion friends. There's also a window at the bottom. So she likes to look through either the top or, or the bottom. Tell us about their whiskers. Megan wants to know if they're good for anything in particular. And I believe the answer is yes, they are. Yes. So seals and sea lions have extremely specialized whiskers. So if you think about what these guys do in the wild, they're gonna be looking for fish. So fish are not necessarily at the top of the water. Fish live at different depths. So the more deep you go, the less light there is. So a lot of the places these guys are foraging, they're trying to find fish, they're trying to chase fish, are very, very dark. So their eyes are really good for seeing in very low light, but when they can't see, they have whiskers. So their whiskers are able to detect the motion of fish, basically the wake. So if you think about like a boat driving, there's right. those big wakes behind it. So anything that goes through the water leaves a wake. The whiskers on a seal and a sea lion are designed to help them find those little ripples in the water. And they can actually use that to trace where the fish have gone. And so basically they're, they're feeling through the water where their prey might be and then they can catch up to the fish. I always thought that was amazing. When Rocky Shores first opened, we had a big sea lion named yes. Big Guy, and uh -huh. he was blind. Yes. But he moved so beautifully through the uh -huh. water, and you could tell he was just using yes. those whiskers to know where the edge of the pool was and know where his food was. And yes. Yeah, we're getting some thumbs up for so, Big Guy there. So even, even Maverick just sitting here, like right now he's at rest, so his whiskers are pointed back. But if he wants to investigate anything, Maverick has very good eyesight but they use their whiskers so much to help with their sense of just knowing where things are, right. identifying things, that even if Maverick is on land right now, can see just fine, and he's looking at something he's interested in, he's gonna point his whiskers forward. Now, if he gets shifty with Daniel being over there, would his whisker, would he, is it like a, what are you doing kind of a thing, or be. mostly just what's it, happening? What is that? What's happening? Okay. What's going on? Even if you guys notice when he hopped out on land, He's obviously not using them to feel through the air, but it's instinct. So he hops out and pointed them forward okay. because it is very instinctual for them to use them as a way to know where they are in space. So underwater, that's how like they avoid the walls and, the, and they'll avoid rocks. They'll avoid kelp is by feeling the vibration of the water. Now, how long can each stay underwater? So California sea lions average about 10 minutes underwater. Okay. And the harbor seals can stay underwater for about 20 minutes. Now, Sometimes people come and the seals are curled up in that corner kind of sleeping. Yes. They sleep underwater too sometimes? So they primarily will haul out and sleep on land, but they can take naps underwater. So what is alarming to people is when you watch an animal that is sitting underwater, you kind of think about them through the eyes of yes, a human. Yes, right. So if you're watching a seal and it's been more than like two minutes, instinctively we start feeling worried because we can't hold our breath that long. But for them, that is a really short amount okay. of time. Oh, one of the ice treats just went in that weir. Oh, there it is. Are so, they going to get be able to get that out? Or do you guys go fetch that later? They might go get it. Okay. It depends how they're feeling that day. But so a lot of people get concerned for the animals, but realize for these guys, like that's such a short amount of time that they might go down. They might take a nap for five to 10 minutes and be totally fine and then come to the surface. That's but so for cool. people watching, it looks kind of terrifying because you might watch for a few minutes and that animal is laying on the bottom or laying on a rock somewhere and not coming up. So you can see we're investigating like the fish on top of that fish pot. Yes. I'm always impressed with how well you guys do keeping the harbor seals apart. I, <laughs> that's the one that escapes me every time. <laughs> yes, the harbor seals are so cute. Now somebody asked earlier if we brush their teeth um, and for the seals we do. Yes, so in the wild seals are gonna eat a lot of things, um, a lot of very crunchy things. They're gonna eat shrimp and things that might have like a little more of a shell on it. It's very 
um, tough, so their, their gums are going to get really agitated. Um, in zoos, we feed them a lot of fish, and we might even cut up the fish. They're just going to swallow it, which means their gums aren't getting the same agitation that they would be from eating all these crustaceans. So one thing we can do for them is actually brush their teeth. Um, if, you're, if you're not agitating your gums, uh, gums a lot, that leads to a condition that people can get to. It's called gingivitis. Gingivitis, and, anyone? And if you go to the dentist and they think you might be developing gingivitis, what they're going to tell you to do is brush your teeth more. So that is yeah, exactly what we do for these guys. Off there. These guys are trained to allow us to brush their teeth every single day. And because of that, they have excellent dental health. Now, Teresa asked a great question that we get asked a lot. And it's interesting wording because she said, how can you tell the animals are happy? And of course, happy is very much a human emotion. Yes. But we, you guys are so well tuned with your animals. You know if they appear to be feeling well, if they're interested. Tell, tell a little bit about, from your perspective, when people ask you that. So an animal that is in, in good health, mentally and physically, is going to be interacting with its environment. So like right now, they're playing with the ice treats. They're interested in the food, they're interactive. Um, these guys, they like training, so they're going to be really interested in, in people coming up. That's part of their natural history is they're, they're pretty attuned to people. So we know that they're going to be interested when we come over. They're excited about food. If we give them toys like this, they might want to play with it. Um, they're going to be using all the space in their enclosure. They're going to be taking naps. A lot of people don't realize, but if you are comfortable and calm and Absolutely. you're not worried about where your food is mm -hmm. and you're not worried about predators and you're not stressed, you're gonna be very relaxed. Just think of yourself at home. If you're relaxed, you might be laying on the couch. So these guys- Ideally, <laughs> yes, I will be. So these guys will haul out and take a nap or in specifically to the seals, they might lay on the bottom of the pool, um, but they're gonna be resting. So a lot of animals that you'll see at the zoo might be resting. And that to me is a sign that that animal has all of its needs met. That animal is not stressed. If an animal is stressed- and calm and yes, relaxed. Yes, if an animal is stressed, you might see them. They'll, they're gonna look agitated. They might be like walking a lot. Yeah. They might be- like staring really intent, you might see a lot of like wide eyes. An animal that's very stressed might not want to eat. Yes. So these guys. These guys look very <laughs> playful. So these guys are, they're playing, they're eating, they're, you know, checking out all the different options here. None of these guys look stressed at all. We have a lot of moms chiming in saying, see kids, even seals get their teeth brushed every day. Exactly. If it's good for the seals, kids, it's good for you. And yes, that's all due to the great training by our animal care team. Let's get a look at this big boy. Now this looks like Maverick. This is Maverick. So does he just like to pop out and say, hey guys, what's going on? Is he waiting for so, more treats? pre-zoo being closed time, uh, 11.30 was when they got lunch. Oh, So okay. we did just give them a small snack, but that's not exactly lunch. Um, He's now, like, what What are you guys doing? So that is normally, <laughs> um, our sea lions are trained at the beginning of the session. They, when we want to train them, they go to a very specific location. And Maverick okay. is standing very close to the door that he is normally asked to go into at the start okay. of every training session. He's on his very best behavior. So he is, he is letting us know that he is ready. And if we would like to give him lunch right now, um, he would be late, fine with that. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so right now with the zoo being closed, uh, we have different hours. So we've just shifted their feeding times a little bit. A little so, bit. And um, he hasn't gotten the memo yet. <laughs> not, well, also, you know, it's, it's fine that you know that lunch is at one, but what, what if you're hungry at 1130? Like That's maybe right. maybe you want an early snack too. And if you're looking really nice and cute and sitting oh, by your he's door, so handsome. maybe somebody is going to want to give you some treats anyways. He kind of does that whenever he's thinking it's treat time, right? Yeah. So, and you know, you'd hate to miss out. So he always likes to check to make sure that like, well, what if, what if you just wanted to feed me? What if I just show up? What? Yeah, it's like kids, right? <laughs> exactly. They kids. know if they're cute, they'll get a cookie. That's exactly. the trick. Now, when is your next demonstration? Are you guys getting ready to do one now? Or are you heading off to lunch uh, now? We're going to go to lunch. And so as soon as okay. we're done with lunch, we're going to do their lunch. Okay. So they are still getting fed three times a day. Um, we have just changed the hours Just shifted bit. it. You guys, that's important to note. The zoo closed, but we still have all these animals that we need to feed and care for. And we need to make sure they're dedicated staff that's coming in and doing the, the feeding and care that they're well cared for as well. So we would love your support at hogelzoo.org right now if you can. Of course, all of us are in kind of tight spots right now. But if you're able, hogelzoo.org, there's lots of ways you can support the zoo. You can donate, you can buy tickets that you'll use at a later time. You can buy animal artwork. There's lots of different ways. Look at him coming on over. And so thank you to the people who have donated here. If you've been enjoying the field trips, that's one way you could. They are so handsome, Stephanie. You're just so right. So thank you so much. We need to thank, 
I'm gonna give you a real extreme close up here. <laughs> Michelle, Joanne, Daniel's manning the Instagram. And then of course, our bevy of seals and sea lions. So thank you guys so much. Don't forget to help support your zoo. The Facebook field trips live on Facebook forever. You can also go catch them at our YouTube channel, Utah's Hogle Zoo. We've had a lot of teachers sharing them with their classes and we're so glad. I know a lot of kids had their field trips canceled. And so we hope that this is a way to just, oh, he's coming back over. Let's flip it back around. We hope that it's a way to give, bring the zoo to you just a little bit from the comfort of your couch. Tanya, thank you so much for donating. Thank you, you guys, for sharing some tips. If you missed the beginning of this, we told you how to make ice treats for your pets at home. So, Carrie, thank you. Please donate, support your zoo, you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out on Facebook Field Trip, and we'll see you tomorrow at 1130. Thanks, guys.